Do you know the saying, it's always darkest before the dawn. I think I'm deserving of a nice sunrise. This morning I woke up to the knowledge that Annie is feeling more sick. So Eva, while I was sleeping, has moved to sister's house and is being taken care of by her to keep her away from well, me slumbering and Annie sick. If that was the only thing that I was concerned about, that's not so bad. People get sick. And as long as Eva doesn't have a fever, I'm not too concerned. But when I opened my phone, I saw a message. It was from my biggest and most important customer. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, some of you do, but I have a trading company where I design products, negotiate a price for those products through factories that make the stuff here in China, and then uh, send an invoice for that order. And then as soon as the money comes in, pass the order to my team, who in turn sends the order to the factory, gets the order made, and then delivers it to the customer. I'm pretty much out of the loop after I close a deal and you know assure that all the pieces are in place for the last 10 or 15 years that has been the process now this last couple of years have been at best frustrating debating my future and being frustrated about certain issues that have come up uh, one of my episodes i'm sitting outside of a uh, underground parking lot entrance and i'm trying to figure out what the hell i'm going to do because some delivery didn't get delivered by some people on my team and I mean obviously the buck stops with me uh, I am the man in charge so the system that I have set up just won't work properly in this case I had designed a product for a customer that wanted it we found a factory to make it negotiated a price and the product was actually time sensitive the client said I need this by X day because we're doing X thing and we need this product to go along with it. We found that we had enough time to do it and so I sent him an invoice. He sent me the deposit immediately because he needed it quick and so I passed the invoice to my team and said okay guys time to go and I sort of forgot about it. My bad. But I normally don't have to worry about it because orders get produced after that and sent on to the customer. Uh, the system has normally been flawless but in this case the client calls me today and says, hey, do you know where my widgets are? The program's coming up in a week and it hasn't been delivered. So instantly my brain is full of uh, alarm sirens and I start trying to chase down answers as to where these things are. The order hadn't even been submitted to the factory. It had not even been produced. There was no, I'll get it to you as quick as possible. There was no, it's stuck in customs in California. There is no, you know, all those things I've experienced. There's, there's none of that. It is a literal disaster. The product had not even been produced. He can't look forward to it to make his deadline, which was the critical negotiating point on, on doing this product in the first place. There is no product. The factory, uh, told us they could expedite something within an X number of days and I could ship it to them within 18 days, have it in their hands in 18 days. Pointless. The program that he needed it for is gonna be in a week. And I had to tell my customer today that I was so negligent that uh, his product had not even been made. I have never accepted a deposit for an order and had the order not started. It just doesn't happen. You know, so, so this took me off guard and the, uh, the apology I had to make to my customer was like kick in the nuts. Especially seeing as though, you know, I've learned a lot since I've been here and accepting a deposit and not starting the production at all is, it's bad. It's bad business, bad behavior. He was sending me texts, my client. He never sends me texts to China. He's literally sending me messages, what's going on? The guy that I deal with orders stuff from overseas. So he was telling me that he's probably gonna get sacked over this issue because his boss, the big boss, is pissed. Rightfully so. The idea that he had product coming in for X thing, the product never even existed and he paid for half of it. I might lose my biggest customer, which I've founded a relationship on for
for the last 15 years. I might have to say I'm sorry and let go of something that uh, has been earning money for me for a long time that I've had like, huge growing pains over earning in the first place. I might have to just say to this customer, I'm sorry, it wasn't the purchaser's fault because it wasn't because I don't want my purchasing agent to get fired because it really wasn't his fault. And I might just have to say, do what you will. I promise this won't happen again, but, but I can't save this thing, you know, in any way that would matter to him right now. We do have long history. Maybe that will count for something. But as you've seen, I've had a really rough couple of years. I have a feeling that uh, this might be the linchpin in losing me my biggest client. And I'm not very happy about it. I spent the day sulking and all around being grumpy and frustrated and pissed. This year I've had problems with almost every one of my major clients. I don't have many. I've kind of founded a business based on a, a few loyal people that work with me because I have integrity and I'm honest with them and I try my hardest most of the time but I have in my mind or I thought that I developed a system that was good it was good for the low volume that I produce but this client was the goose laying the golden egg for me without him I don't have income not not enough income not enough income that allowed me to comfortably think about traveling around the world without worry of money what it does is it sort of shifts things, so... I mean, I try to think of silver linings in most everything. I've literally just got kicked in the nuts, so... The pain is still pretty fresh. My fingers are still tingling. But, uh... You know, it's always darkest before the dawn, and... Maybe this is what I needed in order to... Shift things into more of a video mode and try to push through better quality blogs or uh, move more towards this element of my life, which is making videos. I do find joy in it, but I've worked very hard for a long period of time and gone through a lot of stresses to build loyalty in my clients. Ha taking a deposit and not making an order is neglect at the, the highest level. I mean, that's wrong, really wrong. Uh, you might ask where I'm going right now. I'm, I'm walking to a pharmacy. Annie doesn't have any face masks. You ask me why, why do I wear face masks? I don't normally wear face masks, but I'm sick. And I don't want to get Eva sick or any more sick. I don't know if she has what I have. I don't know if she has a mixture of something else. I don't want a chance coughing in her general direction and actually getting her sick any more than she already is. So that's why me and Annie are wearing masks. It's not like uh, we're wearing those masks so that, you know, we're protecting the citizenry or, you know, some sort of weird pollution thing. It's literally because I have a cold, Annie has a cold, and we don't want to make Eva's cold any worse. In China, they call pharmacies. Do you see that? People dispensaries. They dispense people there. Now, I know you're asking yourselves, how could I let this happen from a business standpoint? You must be wondering, how could that happen? It's gotta be more complicated. But I'm not gonna get into it because I don't wanna really get into my personal business uh, just describing what happened. It was dumb and lack of oversight, uh, lack of staying on top of things, and a uh, breakdown in communication. I think most problems in business, whatever you're doing, can be boiled down to a breakdown in communication in one way or another. And this was a fairly major one, and the problem lies on my side. The, tonight I have to receive a call from the big boss. I am not looking forward to the call. Used to do door-to-door -door sales. It was one of the first jobs I ever had. I used to be a door-to-door -door salesman. I used to drive a truck. Here, let me tell you a little story. I worked for a company called Ramco Equipment Company. And I sold, uh, I think, three pieces of industrial equipment out of the back of a pickup truck. There was a 20-ton uh, press. There was a metal cutting bandsaw. 
what was the third thing? I can't even remember. Three pieces of heavy machinery, red and white. <laughs> I found it in the back of a newspaper. It was an ad saying, would you like to earn $3,000 a month? So I said, hell yeah, I'd like to earn that. And they said, meet us at the Fairfield Inn Hotel uh, and we're gonna have a meeting of all the people that might be interested in doing this. And I went there, I was 16 at the time. Because I remember I had just got my license. There were some old kind of southern guys there, you know. Some of them actually followed this. This was like a roving business. This Ramco Equipment Company would go around to places. I lived in downtown Detroit, so it was a very industrial area. It was prime target for this sort of uh, sales of these kind of big machines. So I went and I, there's all these guys and they're saying, this is the scoop, guys. We have this equipment. It's in back in a huge container truck that was sitting out in, in back of the hotel. And they had bought this, it was a room with beds in it, but they were converting it into headquarters for this Ramco equipment scam. It was really a scam. And uh, they said, we're gonna give you badges that say Ramco Equipment Company, and you're gonna go drive around and you're gonna knock on doors of all of the factories in Detroit, in downtown Detroit or Metro Detroit area. And so we got in these pickup trucks and we had to go around and we had to tell a story. And they said, you sugarcoat the story the best way you can, change your accent. Like my accent's kind of like a Detroit, like a Northern American accent. But I had to kind of dumb it down and have a little bit of a Southern tinge to it because I was traveling with a company called Ramco Equipment Company. And I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of equipment on the back of our truck. We are looking to liquidate instantly. Uh, my boss sent me out. He told me that we got to sell this whole truckload of stuff. I cannot take it back to the factory floor because my boss is going to fire me. He said, I, I don't need it. I don't want it. Whatever you got to take to sell it, you got to sell it. We had this whole script about who we were, what our personality was, what we were supposed to say when we approached the business, and tips on how to get through to the purchasing person. And we were supposed to sell that equipment out of the truck on the spot. And we even had like paperwork. So I carried with me documentation on the value of the gear. Like that metal cutting bandsaw was $5,000. But I could go anywhere as low as like $500. Anywhere in between that was profit. That's where you earn that $3,000 a week. I had to go out and basically sell as hard as I could. I'd never done anything like it in my life. And the first week, we, we would drive from place to place. Hi, my name is Matt. I'm with Ramco Equipment Company. I've got a trailer full of stuff. Get the, get the hell out of here. Get out of here. I've seen you before. Go, go, go. Not me, but Ramco Equipment Company. Because Ramco had come and probably hit this area 10 years ago. A couple of guys actually said, yeah, I got one of your saws in the back. I bought it last time. Get out of here. You gave me the same story. Man, taught me how to take a no. Taking a no is hard, especially when you're, you know, new to it and you're just trying to make a buck and you think the product's pretty good. And so you're just trying to sell the best you can. And people giving me the stink eye, being nasty, nasty. But every so often, like one out of a hundred, I would pull up to a place, put my arm out the window. Hey, is the boss here? No. Oh, can I talk to somebody in purchasing? Well, who do you want to talk to? Well, my name's Matt with Ramco Equipment Company. I've got a truckload of equipment. It's good stuff. And my boss says he wants to get rid of it real quick. And every so often it would work and I'd have a meeting with somebody in purchasing or, you know, these were kind of the outskirts of Detroit. So you get the, the owner and overalls kind of coming out and sitting down and yeah, some of the guys actually had a chat with me. At one point in time, I went and uh, had a meeting with one of the biggest powertrain factories in Detroit. This factory was hundreds of acres. And I remember pulling up and in a big parking lot was the front and then I walked in and hi my name's Matt with Ramco Equipment Company can I meet with the with the boss we have a meeting you know some of the technique was just say you have a meeting you know well who is this well my name's Matt I'm with Ramco Equipment Company the boss told me come on by and you know and he wanted to hear what I had to say or something I don't forget what they said so the secretary goes back and she comes back with kind of a weird grin on her face she says go back 
So I go through the little lobby area, go through the foyer, walk down this hall of offices. We're talking a huge factory. And I open the door to this guy. Kind of your typical Detroit factory owner, a little bit portly, pictures behind, hardwood lined uh, office, all, all of the walls and the ceiling, like it just looked like you were in a log cabin when you were in his office. And uh, sit down, sir. He says, and I sit down and he, what do you got for me, he said. I said, hi, my name's Matt. I'm with Ramco Equipment Company. I, I have a truckload of stuff that I really want to, he said, stop, 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 he said. I know who you are. I've seen Ramco Equipment Company. They've come and go for years since I've owned my business. Just give it to me straight, kid, what do you got? And I said, well, I got, you know, three pieces of equipment, you know, metal cutter bags. He's like, stop, stop, stop. That, that's, that's not your true voice. Talk to me. And so I smiled and was kind of nervous, really nervous. And I said, uh, sir, I think this is really good stuff. I'm not gonna pull any punches. I'm pretty sure you know what I have here. It's a metal cutting band saw. I gave him the specs. And he says, how much you want for them? And uh, so I gave him a price, you know, started high, you know, the metal, well, you know, the metal cutting band saws retails $5,000. So I, I think, and this is one of the funny things. There was a, there was a guy that was at the hotel that was his only purpose was to take calls from you. So you would call and you'd say, uh, you would always expect the owner to say, well, will you take $1,000? I don't know, sir. I'd have to call my boss. Hey, Joe, uh, yeah, I've got a guy here. He's really good. I think he'll take the. I think he'll take the press for a thousand dollars. Can we give it to him for a thousand dollars? Oh, oftentimes he wouldn't even say anything. He'd just be saying, "What do you think?" And I, you know, is he? Do you think he's gonna buy? He'd say on the other line because he'd know I'd be listening. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. You think he? You think we could let it go for fifteen hundred, sir? He says he's gonna let you have it for 1500 is that okay? You know, there was this whole thing. And I had done it many, many times. I mean, this was a job I, I didn't have for a long time, but I had it for about a month. And uh, so this guy, he, he's like, no, 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 it's 5,000? He's like, okay, I'll, what is your take on it? What, what is the bottom line? I know, you, I know the system. And so I, I kind of jacked up the, I jacked it up it was 500 let's say I jacked it up to 700 I was like well he they said I have to at least get 700 and he's like well I'll give you a thousand <laughs> and uh, he's like I'll give you a thousand because we need a metal cutting bandsaw and you're just here at good timing and now that that's out of the way Susan Susan he yells Susan could you put together a, an invoice for for this young man and uh, set it up for a thousand, you know, thousand dollars for this metal cutting bandsaw. So I gave Susan paperwork, and so you know, where are you from? And we talked for a while, and uh, I got to know him a little bit. Not enough to really even remember his name, but he definitely made an impact on me. That was one very memorable moment. There was another very memorable moment where I accidentally picked up a hooker in downtown Detroit. But I'll save that for another time. That is a very interesting story. Remind me someday to tell you about it. It's crazy. Anyways, yeah. There was uh, weeks I'd make, I would make $3,000. Because you wouldn't make it in a week or a month, you'd make it in a day. That day I left that guy's office, I had made $500 that day. That's a lot of money. And uh, one day I sold, you know, I upsold one of the metal cutting bandsaws. It was like $800 I had to give them to pay for it, the Ramco people, and I was able to upsell it to $4,000. I remember signing that agreement. My hand was almost shaking out. I just realized at that instant that I made $3,000. It's crazy. But those stories were few and far between. The majority was hard nose hard like angry nose like you're wasting my time i know who you are you are a scamming salesperson get the hell out of the here no those are hard to take
Negativity is hard to take. I've always had trouble with negativity. I'll tell you another funny story. I had a paper route. I had a paper route when I was like nine. I was one of the youngest paper delivery boys in like Southeast Michigan, if I remember correctly. It was a long time ago. I just know that I was like nine or 10 and I was delivering papers. And the worst time uh, I had being a, a paper boy was collecting. I used to dread walking up to the door and asking people to give me money for something I did for them, whereas in this case I was giving them a newspaper. And I remember feeling, I, I, I felt like I should just give you the paper. Just, just take the paper, you know? I didn't felt, feel deserving of the money, even though I was doing the service. I remember there was a few times where the person I tried to collect from was on vacation or not in the house. I'd knock one day, the next day I'd knock again, two days later I'd knock again, they were still not there, and pretty soon they would double up their payment. It was two payments. <gasps> they owe me more money than normal, and I felt bad. If I remember correctly on this instance, I let that person go on a month overdue paper because I was too afraid to ask them to pay me what I deserved for because I was delivering the papers, but they were piling, the papers were piling up. I could tell that they weren't like reading them. And I remember thinking, I can't ask them to pay for me, pay for this much. It's too much. It's too much to ask from somebody. It's too much to ask them to pay. It's not fair. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was rain or shine, five o'clock in the morning on Sundays, you know, after school, delivering papers. I, I used to get beat up by uh, bullies. A bully used to kick my bike over and throw, no, throw my newspapers along the ice, I remember one day. His name was Adam. I went through some hardships to deliver papers to people, but I still felt like, I don't know, a strange sense of obligation that I was getting them their paper and they shouldn't have to pay me if I felt like it was too much and I was nervous. I think it has to do with the fact that I, I like to avoid confrontation and I don't like to let people down. I didn't want to tell that person that they owed me more than the standard payment because I didn't get that last week. So, so I let them down by not getting it on time last week, even if they weren't around for, for them to give me the money. And I also didn't like getting in the situation where somebody was gonna go negative at me. Fast forward to that Ramco story, that was enlightening. It taught me how to take, take rejection and take blatant, blatant no's. But yeah, in, deep down inside, I still have that, that fear of the no, the fear of making people angry or doing wrong to people. It's not cool. I'm really quite frustrated and scared about this interaction I have to make with my customer. I'm sad that, you know, my purchasing agent's got to take the brunt for my mistake. I'm trying with all my might to try and spin this into sort of a silver lining issue. <sighs> I came to China to try to get a hold on my business, you know, and I found that I love video while I was here. It's a cool thing to find your passion, especially when you've been following a path that you thought would net you a positive. Oh, I'm gonna make a lot of money being a, you know, a trading guy and oh, whatnot. But money wasn't necessarily the important thing I was struggling for, it was happiness. And I'm happy making videos, as long as people are happy watching them. I feel like I'm on the precipice of a big shift in my life. It's gonna put a lot of challenges in front of me. I've lived quite challenge free for some time now. I mean, big challenges. I worked hard for 15 years. I've sacrificed a lot, I've lost a lot of hair and had a lot of stress for a long period of time. And I've been riding that wave of, you know, good customers ordering regularly, never really having to worry so much about money. But I might have to get back into the trenches here real soon. On the positive side, I'll be armed with the knowledge that I've gained over the last few years. And a lot of that knowledge was gained in that void that was opened by not having to worry about money. And I could just freely learn about video and, and travel and, and do these things with a little bit of money in my pocket. So that now with, with no money maybe, or with less money, 
coming in at least, I'm going to have to uh, get back to that creative center and maybe try and figure out a way to, to make it again. You guys will have a front row seat for it. Enjoy the ride.